This example is going to start us off with a second derivative here. So the second derivative of f is equal to x times x plus 2 squared. And they want to know when is the original graph f concave down. So quickly, let's talk about how we find out where something's concave up and concave down. That's going to be using the second derivative test. Whenever our second derivative is negative, that tells us that our graph would be concave down like a frown. Wherever our second derivative is positive, that's going to tell us where our graph is concave up like a cup. And then the points where our graph can change concavity, where it could stop being concave up and start being concave down, or stop being concave down and start being concave up, those are what we refer to as inflection points. And those are going to happen when our second derivative equals zero or our second derivative is undefined. So conveniently for us, we are starting with the second derivative information. And so we're kind of about, you know, we're sort of step one into a second derivative test. So second derivative test is always what you want to use when you're looking to find concavity. And normally step one of the process would be to find that second derivative. Well, second derivative is already taken care of for us. So then step two of the process is we want to find those possible inflection points. We want to find when does it equal zero or when is it undefined. Well, the undefined situation, you really only have to worry about when you're looking at fractions and when you would get division by zero, because that would be where you would have an undefined situation. So for us, we don't have any fractions, so we're really looking at the straightforward idea of whenever this equals zero. So then we get x times x plus 2 squared. Well, the other nice part about this is they already factored it for us. So what we do normally is we would factor that ourselves, and then we would split this up and say whenever the left equation equals 0, that's when we've got a possible inflection point. And then whenever this right side equals 0, that's when we've got a possible inflection point. So again, they're helping us out here by not making us do the factoring ourselves. The left side is taken care of. We've got a possible inflection point, a place where it could change concavity at x equals 0. And now we just need to keep solving this right-hand equation to find out if we have any other ones. So we'll cancel out that squared by square rooting both sides. So we end up with x plus 2 equals 0. And then you go ahead and minus 2, minus 2, and we end up with x equals negative 2. And so that's going to be our second possible inflection point. Then step three of the process is where you would actually do the second derivative test. I'm just going to call it the second D test. And that's what we would, I refer to as just the number line game. So what we do now is we draw out our number line, and we're going to mark our inflection points on there. So we've got one is happening at negative 2. That's a possible inflection point. Then we've got our other one is happening at 0. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to choose test values from each of these regions. So something to the left of negative 2, I'm going to choose negative 3. Something between negative 2 and 0, I'm going to choose negative 1. And then something to the right of 0, I'm going to choose 1. And so those are my test values. This is a second derivative test. So remember, the math people are not creative namers, so we are going to test all of our values in the second derivative. So I'm going to do f double prime of negative 3, f double prime of negative 1, and then f double prime of 1. So we're taking and plugging our test values into our second derivative, again, that they gave us for free at the start. So we start off and we would plug in for x everywhere negative 3. So I get negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2 squared. So then out of there, I'm going to get negative 3 up front. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared would be positive 1. And so out of there, we get negative 3. When you're doing this work, you don't care about the number. You just care whether it's positive or negative. So this is telling us that this is negative in this region. So negative would be concave down like a frown. Then you would go on and do the same thing with negative 1. So I plug in negative 1. I get negative 1 times negative 1 plus 2 squared. So negative 1 times and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we get out of there 
negative 1. So again, don't care about the number, just care that that was negative. And so again, it is still concave down like a frown in that region. Then from there, we would go ahead and pop in 1. So plugging 1 into our second derivative up here, we would end up with 1 and then 1 plus 2 squared. So we get 1 times 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so we end up with 9. So then this is now concave up like a cup. And so this would be positive and concave up like a cup in that region. So where is it concave down? Well, it is concave down, that's what we want on this one, from our inflection point at zero and everything back this direction. So even though it has this possible inflection point right there, it never changed concavity. And so that's not going to be a place where this thing breaks. So it's from zero and everything less than zero on this one. So it's a, a, oftentimes people think when you get these other possible inflection points, you break your interval. But no, it's starting at zero and it's going everything less than zero because every place less Less than that it's going to have a negative concavity so then this would be x is less than zero for our final answer on this one which would be option c thanks for watching my video if you liked it please click that like button and subscribe and also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming ap calc test you can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.